Kirkman Biologist. This session where we're going to look at semi-conservative replication within DNA. So DNA replication occurs in the S phase during interphase where the cell spends the majority of its life within the cell cycle. So DNA replication starts with the enzyme DNA helicase, which breaks the hydrogen bonds between the bases, as you, see, as you can see in that image there. Now, anything underlined and bold here is taken directly from the MAT scheme. We really need to know those bits and pieces. So because of the DNA helicase breaking those hydrogen bonds between the bases, so don't forget there's three hydrogen bonds between a G and a C and two between an A and a T. Um, that means that when those bonds break, I'm unwinding or uncoiling that double helix. And each strand of DNA is going to act as a template. So then what happens is free DNA nucleotides that are free in the cytoplasm of the cell, they come alongside their complementary base pairs. So wherever I've got a G exposed, a C will come alongside it. Wherever I've got a T, I'll get an A, so on and so forth. So they line up along their, in their complementary base pairs. Hydrogen bonds will then reform between these bases and the enzyme DNA polymerase will come and join the sugar phosphate backbone, which is this part here. So the DNA polymerase helps to form the three to five phosphodiester bonds that create the new sugar phosphate backbone. I've now got two identical molecules of DNA. Now, DNA replication is semi-conservative, which means I have one old and one new strand present within my new DNA molecules. So here I have a mark scheme to show you. Um, I'm not going to read through it, but those are the mark scheme points that we really need to be aware of here. So there is a very popular experiment here by Messelson and Stahl that comes up uh, in the exam. I've seen it a couple of times in multiple choice questions, so you do need to kind of get your head around it. So what they did is they grew bacteria, E. coli, in a nitrogen-15 base, um, nitrogen-15 medium. And what happened here is when the DNA, when the DNA was um, duplicated as the cell, cells reduplicate, um, they create new DNA. And don't forget, DNA has these components made up of it. It's made of these nucleotides. So they have nitrogen as bases within them. So if my E. coli, which is grown in my nitrogen 15, it will have nitrogen 15 within the nitrogen as bases. So that means that when they took the E. coli out of this culture and they centrifuged the DNA, because it, it was quite heavy, because it was nitrogen 15, what they did after centrifuging, the, the band would be quite low within the tube because it's quite heavy and it would result in a nitrogen-15, nitrogen-15 heavy DNA. Then what they did is they took the E. coli out of this culture and they put it into a nitrogen-14 medium. So when the DNA was being replicated in the nitrogen-14 medium, it meant that one of the new strands would have the new nitrogen-14 within their nitrogen spaces. So therefore, I'd have a mixture of a nitrogen 15 and a nitrogen 14 within my DNA. So therefore, I get a band in my centrifuge tube that is higher than the nitrogen 15, because any when you centrifuge things, the heart, the heavier things components go towards the, the bottom of the tube and the lighter ones go towards the top. But because this is a mixture of both the heavy and the light chain, it appears in the middle where a mixture of the two together is found. They then kept the bacteria within the same medium, so nitrogen 14, and allowed them to replicate again. Now this time, um, when my strands of DNA separate and I get new free DNA nucleotides joining up, because I have the free DNA nucleotides being made up of nitrogen 14 within the nitrogen space, I have one nitrogen 14, 14, DNA, so two light strands together, and I've still got one heavy and one light strand together. So this means I'm going to get two bands then when I centrifuge this medium. I'm going to get one lower down where I've got a mixture of my nitrogen 14 and 15, and then I'm going to get one slightly further up where I've got my pure nitrogen 14 DNA. If I carry on undergoing this replication, I'm going to get more and more pure light strands being formed. And the more I undergo this replication in the nitrogen 14 broth, the heavier or darker or more prominent this disc here at the top is going to be. It's going to get thicker. And that's all we need to know on semi-conservative replication.